What's going on guys? Josh here from Polymathics and today I have a question for you. How many of you are in a job that you're really frustrated with and you're sitting there, you're staring at a computer screen all day, you're in a cubicle and you're just counting down the minutes. Can't wait until you know five o'clock or whatever time it is rolls around so that you can get out and go home and relax right I used to be like that I totally get it well today I'm here to tell you why you don't want to quit your day job and why with a little change of perspective your day job could become one of the greatest places ever for you to work um, and I know that sounds crazy but bear with me so first thing I want to, so I'm going to tell you guys uh, one of my favorite quotes from Albert Einstein. He said, if the facts don't fit the theory, change the facts. And a lot of us want to work for something that's inspiring. And a lot of us have an idea of where we want to go and what our, you know, what our vision is for the future and what our dream job is and things like that. Um, the problem is, we're stuck either in school or flipping burgers or sitting at a cubicle and it's not very inspiring and so we sit down every day and, and we just kind of rot the problem is if you allow yourself to wallow in that type of um, mindset for too long it'll wear on you it'll you'll get a lot of pent up negative feelings and what will happen is whether it's conscious or not you'll you'll start spreading that negative energy to other people and how many of you guys know someone at your work who walks around just shooting out tons of negative energy about how they hate this person or the boss is you know giving them another you know job to do that and they can't believe that that their boss would have done that you know like we all have people in our work areas that are like that and sometimes even we are guilty of it but the thing is the reason why people are like that is because they're so full of negative energy and they're so distressed distraught distracted and disengaged with their job that they just they don't care anymore so <clears throat> what I'm here to tell you is like that you can treat your day job aside from providing you some financial stability as you go through life and, and allowing you to help pay your bills and and feed your children um, it's also a great playground for you to go in and experiment I consider my day job as like the ultimate laboratory and and I'm here today to kind of convince you that that it that that is it is an ultimate laboratory because you see um as you go through day to day every day you can experiment on new approaches and new new methods and you know all different things because here's the cool thing about a job that I think a lot of you guys don't realize and this is especially for people who like you're aiming towards at, at some point you plan on transitioning out of this job and either owning your own business or working for your dream job right if you're in that boat then what you have to do is you have to consider your dream job is like the perfect opportunity I'm, I'm sorry not your dream job your day job is the perfect opportunity for you to sit down and play around and really experiment and meet people because okay it's the only place where you get paid to go and every day you get to interact with people most of us there are very small majority of us who sit down and just stare at a computer screen and get no interaction but the interaction could be via chat via email face to face whatever the case may be each one of those interactions is an opportunity for you to cultivate new skills and that can be from your approach to your pitch to um, you know professionalism in your emails or in your discussion or maybe 
Maybe you've been given an opportunity to speak in front of a big group of people. I know, so here's the thing, like at my work, if, if you were to ask most of the people that I work with, you know, who wants to give a speech on, on what we do as an organization, 95% of them roughly would not raise their hands because none of them want to go, none of them see that as an opportunity. They see that as more work and things like that. To me, it's an opportunity because then I can go in there, whether, whether I do great or whether I fail, te fail terribly, what will happen is I'll have a new reference point. It will give me a new thing. So, so A, right, if I say, hey, yeah, I'll be the one to speak, what does that allow? That means that now I have to prepare a speech. Now I have to, you know, practice and work on my oratory skills. And now I get to get in front of probably um, other people within the organization and leadership, which means I'm going to get face time, right, which is more exposure. And then when I give the speech, I'm going to, again, have that reference point. So when I look back and say, you know, how many speeches have I given? Instead of saying none or one or two, I can be like, oh, yeah, I've given tons of speeches. So I feel comfortable with that because I have that experience under my belt. And even if I do bad in that one particular speech, well, now I can say, okay, this particular spot or this part of the speech didn't, didn't resonate so well with the audience. So what can I do next time? to move forward. At least now I know where I can work on. I know what the problem is and I can get feedback from other people. But if I never experiment, if I never go out there and try anything, then I'll never have any feedback and I'll never know what my my capabilities are. And the reason why this is so important is for those of us who intend on going further, whether it's in your career at your day job or most of you, most of you guys who are watching this video are probably planning on creating your own business or or working somewhere else that's more in line and congruent with your your true desires and dreams and goals you're gonna need those skills anyway so why not cultivate them now and the reason so to go back to my original point the reason why your job is so great is so think about it like this if you went to the airport there are tons of people that you can interact with just like at work. The problem is, it's weird. You can't just go up to someone and cold approach them and start giving them a speech or talking to them about some random topic. They'll look at you like you're crazy, right? At work, it's a safe environment. Everybody's there for essentially the same purpose. So if you go into a meeting or you or you, you know, step over to someone else's cubicle to discuss something, that's that's not weird it's within the comfort zone it's it's socially acceptable so now you have a, a place where you can go to every day where it's socially acceptable to go and talk to people and try out these new things now some other tactics that I have because you know some of you may not be ready to to give a speech and some of you may not have the opportunity to give a speech in front of a bunch of people but there are tons of opportunities um what I try to do every day is find one or two topics that are really interesting in the news and um, and then go around to different people in the organization and talk to them about it and what this does oh man there are so many things that it does one like I said you're cultivating your speaking skills two <clears throat> you can try new things so like maybe maybe one person you tell it as a joke another person you approach them seriously and you see how the responses are different or the same. And you may also see, like, you learn a lot about the people you work with, too. Because some of them, say say I, I talk about something that's, uh, you know, really science-related. Like, they found that um, using certain lenses on the Hubble telescope, they were able to um, see a black hole bending light right that's an interesting topic and you present it to some people in your organization some of them may not respond to it at all why because maybe they're not into like science stuff maybe they're more into like entertainment or weight loss or fitness or something right so you learn about the people 
and based on the responses, next time you know what kind of topic to bring to them to get that res that um, response. All of these interactions are going to allow you to build rapport with the people you work with. And building rapport, even though you may not care about any of them, building rapport with people is going to be key no matter what job or business or whatever you're doing. That is that is the cornerstone of success, is people and building rapport with them. So why not start cultivating that skill now? The other thing is, um, in your job, you're going to have lots of opportunities to take initiative or um, become a part of a team or lead a team. All of those, all three of those things are tantamount to your success going forward into other fields. So why why not jump on those opportunities? You've got to be there anyways, right? But instead of slugging around and feel like you're wasting time, why not change the mindset so that you see it more as like, this is my laboratory where I get to play around, where I get to experiment, where I get to learn about people, about things. Once you view <coughs> all of these interactions as little experiments where you're mixing different chemicals together to find a, the best solution, then all of a sudden it changes your perspective. And now, you know, you can become this great alchemist of people and ideas and projects. And before you know it, you're sharing the elixir of life and success with everyone because you're that focal point, right? And like I said before, if even if you don't plan on staying at that company for, for long, you've developed a social circle of people who are going to um, support you as you go on on your future endeavors. So, um, anyways, I hope that's been helpful. Think about today, what are some experiments you could run tomorrow, today, next week, right, in the near future, where you just take a few topics and you kind of try different approaches? Or maybe, <coughs> um, you know, if, um, if, if you've got an opportunity to give a speech or take initiative on something that nobody else wants to do or be a part of a team or lead a team or anything in those areas, you know, why not jump on that? Yeah, there may be work involved, but you're going to be doing work anyways. Whether you're doing no work or a ton of work, you're stuck there for those hours anyway. So why not make them useful? Why not learn about the world and yourself? So that as you go and do things that you do like, then you'll be more prepared and more confident because you'll have all of those reference points to build upon. Okay, this has been Josh Coker from Polymathics. Till next time, take it easy.